is cold. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fun recollections that lie there. Man, I'll tell you, that north wind is whipping it up today. I'm telling you what, I've got my union suit on. You know what that is? You really didn't need to know that, but, uh, and yes, it is red. <laughs> Google it if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and it is 821 on a Saturday morning. I don't usually hit the thrift shops on Saturday morning, but I've got stuff to do in Jersey, and so I'm gonna head across the bridge out of Philadelphia into New Jersey and hit this thrift shop at nine o'clock when it opens and uh, see what's what. No, there's not gonna be another 20 minute preamble like there was yesterday, and I'm gonna cut that piece of string off of the end of my, I love my subscribers. You, you guys, you guys are so observant. Someone said, what's that on the end of your glove? It is a thread of string, which I shall deal with when I get uh, the opportunity so to do. Thanks for coming along, everyone. How are you guys doing today? What did you have for breakfast? Okay, I'll stop. How do I turn this thing off? Okay, everyone, we're back at school. All right, get your notebooks out. Get ready to take notes. Now take a look at this. What is it? What is this? Is it standing correctly on the shelf? Should it sit this way? Or should it sit this way? Now, a whole bunch of you said, you knucklehead, of course it doesn't sit that way. Turn that thing around. It's a vase or a fruit bowl. It sits like that. Well, are you sure? Let's, let's, let's take a closer look at it. Should it sit like that? or like that, and is something missing? Stay tuned to the end of the video and you'll find out. I'm here everyone, I'm just being quiet. <laughs> I'm just letting you enjoy the uh, ambience. Little ambience. Oh, 
Oh, you just got a hint of what's in my cart. You got a little sneak peek. Christmas aisle. I know there are often treasures in these bags, but I have to be honest, sometimes I just don't take the time. It can be difficult to weed through all these bags, but you know, it pays off. By the way, this is, uh, let's see, two weeks before Thanksgiving. I don't know the date, but we're somewhere in uh, mid mid uh, November, early to mid November. And uh, how many of you are secretively, and you know you are, you've started listening to a little bit of Christmas music. Now you complain, and you're not going to admit it. Oh, it's too early for Christmas music. But you know, you know, you're laughing right now because some of you are listening to Christmas music. Hey, I've, I've put a few Christmas tunes on. I'm, I'm trying, I'm getting in the mood. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I don't start playing it before the Halloween candy goes on sale, but I think we can have a few tunes in mid-November. Come on now. You know you pulled out the Bing Crosby records. Oh, snow babies. Twelve ninety nine. People bought them by the truckload. Mm, twenty five years ago. When did they come out? I know they were. They, I know they've been around for at least twenty years. Did they come out in the eighties or the nineties? I think they might have come out in the eighties. Now they're all little snow orphans. Okay. I'm not talking about the snow babies made in Germany in the 1890s or the ones made in Japan in the 1920s. I'm talking about the ones we all remember from the 1980s, the late 80s. And guess what? When you do an eBay search for active listening listings of snow babies, how many do you think pop up? Over 22,000 of them are currently listed on eBay. How many have sold in the last 90 days? 3,000. What's the average selling price? Mm, 99 cents to two or $3. Now, you can do the search and you'll see a big group of them, about 150 of them in their boxes, sold for about $250. But the vast majority of these things Unless you're a collector or want to give them as a charming gift, there's not much in it for a reseller. Oh, here's one. Oh, here's one. This person didn't finish their project in, in ceramic class. Come here, Santa. Oh, come on. There we go. Un unfinished. $3.99. What does that say? 
Well, I have to admit, those are beautiful plates, are they not? It's transferware, English transferware, but they're really pretty. Let me see here. The uh, colors of them remind me of the Persian carpets that were so popular in the 1920s, the jewel tones. Boy, those are really pretty plates. I must admit, I don't know much about those. Look at that one. You see it? Wow. Very pretty. No, go back, buy them, buy them. I might, I might buy them just because they're, you know, beautiful and decorative. I'm not sure what their resale value would be, but they really are beautiful decorative plates. Here's some more English plates. Sometimes I, <clears throat> excuse me, I just, I just like to admire the things and uh, take pictures and sometimes I don't buy the things, but I'll take pictures and go home and then, and then study. Oh my word. Because I love learning and so I'll, I'll take those pictures of those plates. If I don't buy them, at least I'll go home and, and study. Gott und Himmel. What's up here? It's beautiful. Well, I'll tell you, someone has uh, turned over their, their collection of English uh, dinnerware, haven't they? This is unusual. Or at least I've never seen it before. It doesn't mean anything, though. Ooh! Bling bling! I don't know. Could have been sold yesterday at Marshall's. I wouldn't know. I don't do retail shopping like that. Oh, Seaside Heights, New Jersey. You know I'm a Jersey native, so I'm allowed to say New Jersey, but you do realize that most people from New Jersey do not say New Jersey. That's that stereotype y'all use guys have of us. <laughs> okay, some people say Jersey, but uh, I do not say New Jersey. Okay, let's play the game again. When was that Homer Lachlan made? Take a look at it, what do you think? Now this isn't the same thing I showed you uh, last week. I'm in a different store in a different town. <clears throat> All 
right? When was it made? Come on now. You ready? E43. A, B, C, D, E. Right? That's one, two, three, four, five. January, February, March, April, May. May! May of 1943. May of 1943. And again, Virginia Rose is the name of the uh, shape, not the pattern. Although um, this, this may be the same pattern that we saw last week with these flowers. I don't remember. It might be. But uh, as we went through the discussion last week, if there were no decoration on it at all, this blank or uh, shape of the dish is called Virginia Rose. But if you remember from last week, you could get Virginia Rose in over 400 patterns. That means the name of the decal. And this, if this is the same decal we saw last week, it has no name. It just has a number, something like J55, something like that, I don't remember. Because as I said, I'm in a completely different store. But the, uh, in case you didn't see that video, the E stands for the month. It's the fifth letter of the alphabet, so the fifth month of the year. And 43 is June, um, is the year. And the N and the R stands for the factory. It's a nice vegetable bowl from the sec era of the Second World War. There's Arizona. Hey everyone, I want to show you this beautiful twin bed, single bed, um, just absolutely beautiful. I want you to take a look at the uh, detail of it. Now what's wonderful is that this uh, bed happens to be signed. It is a mass-produced, factory-made bed, uh, but it was made by a very high-end furniture company from Camden, New Jersey that is no longer in business, but the name Van Skyver in this area, in this, in my neck of the woods, means quality furniture. And I'm gonna, I'll show you the label right down here. Stay with me. Lovely. When was it made? Well, it was made before 1930. Uh, somewhere anywhere between 1915 to 1920 to 1925, somewhere in that era. And I just love it. This is the kind of thing, if I were still in my brick and mortar shop, this would be going with me. I'm still tempted to just take it and put it in my mother's basement for $15. I mean, oh my goodness. Gorgeous. Okay, we'll think about that. Okay, enough is enough. I'm back. Um, it sits this way and it is missing something. What is it missing? It's missing its punch bowl. This is the base to a punch bowl. How many times have I seen it? sitting like this and advertised as a vase. Now, you could sit it like that without the punch bowl and put jelly beans in it. Uh, but this is actually made as a uh, base to a punch bowl. 
Now there is a hint on this one which would help us out. Let's look very closely and let me get it into the light as best I can. I want you to notice that these edges are polished. I shouldn't say edges, but uh, the rim here is polished flat. Do you see that? Let's get it up where you can see it better. See there? That's not where that was polished that way in the factory. You can see it clean, plainly there and there. Why was it polished off like that? It was polished off like that so that this piece would sit flat on your dining room table. Okay, And then this area right here on the underside of the punch bowl, there would be a, a smaller rim that would fit down in here and then your big punch bowl would, would stand right on top of this base. I'm gonna look around and see if they have separated the punch bowl, which they may have done. I see some punch bowls down there. Those aren't pressed glass. So we'll look and, we'll look and see if we can find it. It could be in here somewhere. But anyway, that's what that is. Also, they have printed the word in here, near cut. I'm gonna, or press cut, rather. I don't know, you probably can't see it, but it says press cut right there. And you already know those lines next to it are inclusions. Those are not cracks, those are not damage. I'm gonna do another video about um, the different types of marks that are found in glass. What is damage, what is not damage, what happened in the factory. And what happened when your Uncle Henry had one too many and knocked into your china closet? There's a big difference between mistakes and uh, just part of the glass making process. But anyway, that's a punch bowl base. It's a pretty one and it obviously held a really big uh, bowl. It's pressed glass, it's not cut, so it's not American Brilliant cut glass. Doesn't have a great deal of value, and, but it really looks beautiful with the punch bowl on it. Okay. So we're going to come back to glass later on, but let's go see if we can find that punch bowl. Alright, so there it is, my Versed platter. The Versed platter I've ever had. So there's Brat Versed, Knock Versed, and the other one is um, another Versed Versed. Versed, Versed. <laughs> the Worst Versed, and lots of red cabbage and spicy German mustard. Bob, you're not singing. Take good care of yourself. Boop boop a doop. <laughs> <laughs>